beautiful people. I'm so excited to be able to share with you again, especially considering the topic in view. I'm so sure you'll be highly inspired, ready to tackle any challenge that might have been confronting or will confront you in the future regarding relationships. Yes, you had me right. Today we'll be discussing love and relationships and it promises to be super, super enriching with our fully loaded relationship coach. He's the co-pioneer of relationship and marriage outreach, reaching out to all class of singles and married people and bringing clarity before and in the course of relationships and helping to establish godly homes through the teaching of biblical principles on relationship and marriage. He's the author of several books and is also a legal practitioner. He's our highly esteemed barrister Ocholi Okutepa. <laughs> Nice to be here. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. All right. So you hear people say, I'm in love, I'm in love, and all of that. But uh, when you ask people, they hardly can articulate in words what it means to be in love. What, is, what does it mean to be in love? What is love? Well, first of all, let me share their struggle. Um, it's actually difficult to articulate the feelings associated with love. So that's why the difficulty exists. But the thing is, at that time, the people try to focus on the feeling and not the meaning or the core foundations of the concept of love. Okay. All right. So I, I'll try to just go away from the feeling. I'll, I'll, I'll get back there and start with the foundational principles that has to do with loving. Okay. All right, because loving begins from the point of choosing. And that's choosing when you're able to appreciate strength and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. All right, so loving is not just about um, liking. Like is different from love because like has all the elements of what is pleasant, what you want, okay. what appeals to you. But, but love has a little bit more to it because, yeah, there's this pleasant thing about you. Uh, but there's also the aspect of you that if I focus on, I may not necessarily be pleased with you. Okay. But notwithstanding my knowledge of both the pleasant and the unpleasant, I choose you. Okay. That's when you come to the point where you say there's love. Okay. You know, is that choice to be kindly disposed to another irrespective of what side of them is on the table. Mm. So when they are great, you know, I'm kindly disposed. When they are not, I'm kindly disposed. Okay. So, you know, it, it influences, it, it, it conditions everything and okay. is not conditioned by anything. Oh. All right. So here's the deal. The, the, the feeling aspect has two sides to it. Okay. When the kind disposition is to the pleasant side of you, the emotions are high mm. by default okay. because we're just having a good time. Okay. But when I am bringing the kind disposition to the unpleasant part of you, my disposition conditions us to get back to the feelings, you oh, know, that makes wow. us happy. You know, so when you see it from that holistic perspective, it begins to help you appreciate the concept and the difficulty people face in relationship. Because okay. today they feel, I'm in love, tomorrow I'm no longer in love. No, yeah. you were in love all the while, but you needed to deploy it mm -hmm. by having a constant character in terms of your disposition. Mm. So you see, with all I said, love is actually even hard to you know, conceptualize. Yes. <laughs> and uh, from what you said, in one sentence, I would say, all you've said is love is decision. Yes. Decision to uphold and to uphold a particular dis disposition regardless Absolutely. Of, of whatever is coming out from the other person. Absolutely. Wow, that's so beautiful. So uh, how do you really know that you love someone? That's like asking me, how do you know you have decided to be disposed a certain way okay. to someone is in action. Okay. And if I travel to the Bible, for God so loved the word that he what he gave, mm -hmm. you know, it translates into an action. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I travel back into the Bible again, I give you another, you know, um, source of defining the nature of that action. The Bible talks about why we're yet sinners. That means we didn't qualify for his showing up. Mm -hmm. But you know what? He said, you know, I want these guys I want our relationship restored. I want things to work better. So I don't care what they are doing right now. Okay. I'm just going to show up there, be man for the first time in my whole eternal existence mm -hmm. and get them back to myself. Wow. All right. So how do you know you love someone? 
is your decision strong enough to make you act mm. in the direction of the decision? Okay. Because you see people, I love you, I love you, I love you. You know the people who say things like, uh, I'll cross a thousand river for you, cross the ocean for you, see you tomorrow if it doesn't rain. Excuse mm. me, you are crossing this in words, but if rain falls, <laughs> I thought you could swim the ocean. Yeah. But just because it's <laughs> going to rain tomorrow, are you yes. salt? All right, so it's so important to appreciate it from the perspective that you know you're in love or someone loves you when their words are consistent with their actions. Okay. Until that's the case, you're dealing with a situation where the person may just be sweet-mouthed, okay. but not exactly in love with you. Hmm. Wow, this is so insightful. And you're coming from a perspective that... Uh, that's not regular at all. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank God. Okay, so uh, I think the next question has already been answered, but for avoidance of doubt, I'll go ahead to ask. So how do you know that someone truly loves you? Consistency in their action. Okay. Like I was saying, I'll just stretch that a little. Okay. Um, you know, love also is not a temporal emotion. Okay. You know, because sometimes one of the ways you know if someone truly loves you is to apply the element of time. Okay. Right? Because if the decision is strong enough, I always give this example to people. I, I've been married for just a little over 10 years. You know, um, I've been friends with that lady for like 17 years plus. Wow. Now, if that, if that has a lot to do with how you feel all the time, mm. then perhaps we'll be tired. Yes. All right? But you, you give the element of time. Mm. And that's why I tell people that rush can crush, especially when it comes to relationships. Mm. Because the feeling can be all there for a month. The mm. feeling can be all there for two months or three. Yes. But when we hit the fifth month or the sixth, how exactly do we manage when the feelings perhaps appears to dissipate? Mm. All right. So when you give the element of time, you can know if their decision is strong enough to be sustained for a long period of time. Because you do not want to be in love with a fair weather person yeah. who today makes you high and tomorrow turns you down low. Yes. All right. You want someone with whom you can build the high, sustain mm. the high, restore the high if it ever tries to go low. Yeah. All right, so it's important to add the element of time in testing the decision. Of mm -hmm. course, then I'll add another element to it. You know, while adding time, you must be discerning. Mm -hmm. Because some guys or ladies do not exactly love you, okay. but they can play the game for longer. Oh. Because when people have a target of what they want to get from you, they are ready to adjust themselves for as long as it takes to get what they want. Wow. So you have a gentleman man who wants to sleep with a lady, mm -hmm. you know, not minding investing months into it, mm -hmm. or the lady who just wants to get his money, yes. you know, and not commit to him, or whatever the case is, because mm -hmm. some guys are the ones trying to get money of the lady. Yeah. You know, so you allow time and discernment as two core principles you must put together. Mm -hmm. Now, time enables you to see what can be seen. Mm -hmm. Discernment enables you to go into what cannot be seen. Mm -hmm. Some people call it intuition. Some people call it uh, whatever they call it. But that's an inner knowing through the voice of your conscience, through the voice of the spirit in you mm -hmm. that makes you appreciate deeper than what you can see. Mm -hmm. And that's why sometimes you come by a decision that you know this person doesn't love you in the long run. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily from any fact on the table. Yes. I mean, they're still bringing the ice cream and pizza yes, well, or something of your spirit says, you know what, don't do this. Yeah. Then later for some people, they even get to see why yes. their spirit kicked against yes. it. So time and discernment will get you exactly, you hmm. know. Now you said something about uh, the unconditionalness of love, that love would not mind what's coming in, but will be, but will keep a particular disposition. Does that mean that uh, if I claim I love somebody and I'm not sure that the person loves me, I should keep loving? Uh, this is where you bring us to the point where we have the opportunity to bring the balance into the question okay. you asked. Yeah. All right. So um, I teach love from two perspectives, okay. love before marriage and love in marriage. All right. Now, first things first, it's love is a circle. Okay. And the circle is not complete until there's a love back. Mm. And I'm going to explain this through scripture. The Bible says we love him because he first, first loved, loved us. us. Mm. So love completes the circle when there's a response to the love given. All right. And that's why God is going to be perfectly justified at the end of this age when he judges those who rejected his love. Mm. And that's what the single person must do. 
Now, realize that God has long suffering, not forever suffering. Mm. And you need to bring the same principle into your life and relationship. Okay. That I'm ready to, you know, deploy my love for as far as I can yeah. for you to give a response that is loving. And I say this, for example, to young men who, you know, pursue a lady. Mm. If her love does not return and complete the circle, you have no business going ahead with the person. Yeah. Or a lady says to you, I love him already. He's not saying anything. Mm. The completeness of the circle is when he opens his mouth and be man. Mm. All right. And not just be a man because you position for him to see, but mm. because he wants you also. Mm. So it's a complete circle. And for some people is that we got in the relationship already and one is acting cold. All right, I can apply long suffering, um, sow all the seeds of love. Mm. But if the harvest isn't coming back, it's time to judge the relationship. Mm. So I teach single people to judge the relationship. Okay. In fact, I often teach that you must sit on the judgment seat as a single person because in marriage you are going to sit on the mercy seat a lot. Mm. All right, but for the married, it's, it's a slightly different ballgame because the covenant is different from the agreement of relationship. Yeah. It's not a covenant of marriage. What do you do? You make more effort to mm. sow the seeds. Mm. And even when the effort isn't working, you go back into intercession, praying for your partner to come to terms with the terms of the covenant. Mm. Because the covenant requires both of you to make continuous effort. Mm. All right, so the, 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 the ball is quite different. You in sit marriage. on very different seats. The mercy seat in marriage, the judgment seat in relationship. Mm. So that no matter how much I bear, mm. I want to go in with a person that I'm fairly sure loves me back just the way I love them. Okay. All right, so there's more work to be done in marriage. And that's why in marriage, you got to do the job of reinventing the wheel of the emotions all the time okay. by your actions, sowing the seeds of action that will produce result in terms of okay. the response. Okay. But for the single person, until you're married, you're not single. Even if they have knocked the door, the window, the <laughs> corridor, I mean, no matter how far you've gone until the oath of marriage is taken, you're, you're still supposed to be single and to watch closely what you're about to commit yourself mm. to. Because the moment you cross, now walk. Yes. Mm. Okay, so from what you've said now, I want to ask another question. For how long would I, would I keep sowing seeds before I come to terms to the fact that, or just decide that, okay, this is not working? Well, I talked about discernment. Yes. Some people may be one second. Another person, maybe 30 years. Oh. That is a personal choice. Okay. For instance, I've had people come to me and say, we broke up after 10 years. I'm like, you didn't break up, you divorced. What were you doing for 10 years? All right? Mm. So while I can't fix the time and season for people, mm. just make sure you're not inordinately somewhere. And I'll say this with every sense of responsibility. One of the things I find very difficult to do is to be very forward about people breaking relationships. Okay. But I've had so many situations where I all but say get out so of so a relationship. <laughs> it was too clear. Okay. So I bring you to the fact. Mm. I, I'll give you a straightforward example. I mean, this guy doesn't trust this lady and his lack of trust is not baseless. Okay. I mean, from her phone to barging in on her having affairs. Mm. And I had to ask him, what are you still what waiting, you waiting for? for? <laughs> I love her. I this. I mm. mean, at a point, he could say that she was having an affair, active affair with three persons. Oh. Like I'm like, well, I say, your love is good, though. I love how, love you, <laughs> how, how deep your love is. But just get ready that this is crusade marriage. And You're trying continue. to win a soul. So continue. <laughs> Since you are yes. evangelist husband and she's crusade wife, wife. continue. Wife. Keep preaching the gospel. <laughs> yes. You know, perhaps your prophet is the Hosea now, but the Lord told to <laughs> marry a uh, harlot, yeah, so that he could teach Israel a lesson. Yes. You know, so, I mean, that conversation still ended in, not in a conclusive way. Mm. Like it ended with, okay. I'll try and see. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, at the end of the day, he just told me, perhaps he needed somebody to tell him this much truth. Mm. Because I came to the point where I, 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 I could no longer pretend about it. Mm. Like, please, mm. look at it plainly. Yes. This is what it working. is. All right. So it's so important to, you know, understand your own times and season. Mm. Then one other thing I would say when it has to do with loving back or otherwise. There are mm. two core principles you must understand when it comes to the issue of long suffering and patience. Okay. There are foundational issues and there are relational issues okay. in every relationship. Mm. Like what I mentioned is foundational. It goes to the core of character, yeah. conviction, and lifestyle. Mm. But when you talk about relational issues, some people are not as good as their partner in communication. That's relational. Yeah. Yes. They can improve. 
They can be taught to communicate. Okay. That's not something that goes into the foundation. I mean, it may be hard, but it's not foundational. Yeah. It's difficult, but it's not foundational. Yeah. You know, these are issues people can adjust. Some people don't have the good sense of dressing, for example, yeah. color combination, God forbid, yeah. that's, that's workable. <laughs> yes. I mean, your gifts can determine it. Yeah. Because some people are getting married to people that you literally have to arrange their wardrobe. And when I say arrange their wardrobe, like this I suit goes with this shirt, with these socks, with this shoe, okay. with this belt. Like you arrange his or her wardrobe <laughs> according to everything head to toe. Yeah. That's adjustable. Yeah. All right. So the, 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 the patience and long suffering should also be determined by the nature of what you are looking at. Is it okay. foundational or relational? Or relational? Hmm. If it's foundational, run 440. Don't even okay. wait. Okay. Except the Lord appear to you in the night and say, my son, my daughter, <laughs> this thing, I will fix it. Remain there. But what if the person is willing to improve? When it comes to foundational issue, there's no issue of willing to improve. Okay. Yeah. You know, willingness, yeah. I, I'll give you an example. How long... I mean, I keep telling people this. The Holy Spirit has not been able to work on you since 15 years that you say you're born again or 30 years that you say you're a Christian. In XYZ area, Holy Spirit could not. Am I God? So I'm not saying anybody <laughs> is perfect, but you need yes. to ask yourself, this thing they are willing, when did the willingness begin? And when will it end? When did the adjustment begin? Yes. How far have we gone with the adjustment? Yeah. Because some people just talk about willing because they want to get you. Oh. I mean, I've seen a lot of cases of people joining a church just because they want to get a girl. Yeah. And after getting the girl, service is over. Yeah. They share the grace. So <laughs> how long? Now, yeah. when it comes, I, I'll identify some foundational issues. Okay. How long does it take us to be born again? Believe, confess. confess. Yes. If you jump to Romans chapter 12, it tells us about renewing our mind. Yeah. How much are they renewing their mind? Because people make promises that are not tenable. Oh. Like, it's not about telling me I will change. Okay. How are you Changing. going about it? Yes. Like, see, when I meet a believer struggling in any area who is actively given to the word, oh. actively given to service in the yes. house of the Lord, mm -hmm. actively given to all the portals of adjustment, yeah. like attend Bible study, belong to the right group, yeah. uh, cut away from the wrong association, mm -hmm. do not mix with certain kind of crowd, mm -hmm. do not take certain liberties. I can take a chance on that one. Okay. More than the one who actually sleeps in church, but those variables are missing. Yeah. Because the hope of all of us is our attention to God. Hmm. Because that's where he has the opportunity to assist and yes. adjust us. Yeah. So some people are just making comments you can't trust. Hmm. But here's what happens. In certain areas, when that's to do like, for instance, the foundation of faith, character, what you do is you actually stand back and slow the process. Mm -hmm. So some people want to keep the process running while waiting to see what happens. No, okay. the Bible talks about by their fruits you shall know them. them. That means their product is what I relate to, mm -hmm. not what they claim. So okay. there are certain relationships here. Yeah, I'm not going to break up as it were. I'm not going to walk away, but I'm going to slow down the entire process. So if you're supposed to knock the window in six months' time, you may not be seeing the window until 12 months' time. Okay. All right, so that I give myself the opportunity to watch closely okay. and to also pray and ask the Lord, mm -hmm. like, is this what I should be patient about or what okay. I should run away from? Okay. Don't forget it was our master Jesus who said to Peter, you know, the devil has asked to see you. He's actually going to save you like wheat. Hmm. But I have prayed for you. When you are restored, yeah. restore your brethren. Yeah. That means Peter was going to go through a patch. Yes. All right. So we need to also in the place of prayer come to terms with, is this going to be fixed? Or this is one of the red flags that I must take off yeah. because of. Hmm. You see what I said? It takes you back to the place of personal responsibility. No counselor, pastor, teacher, prophet can determine these things for you. Yeah. You sit be responsible towards God and towards your relationship, then you can find the perfect the match balance. for what to do. Yeah. Yes. Now you just you met some. You, you, you said something now, and it just it popped. A, a question popped up. You said, uh, "Except the Lord appears to you," and we've, <laughs> 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 we've had these kind of scenarios again and again and again in church. You know, some of them end up well, and some of them don't. What's your take on this? The Lord said to me, "You are my husband. You are my wife." First of all, anybody who says to you, the Lord said, tell them to go and tell the Lord, I also hear him. Okay. 
because it has become a tool of manipulation for a lot of people. Okay. Now, let me also quickly say this. The same scripture says that we know in part and prophesy in part. What's prophecy? Yeah. A lot of times people think prophecy is, mm, mm, present. Ah, ah. No, please leave drama alone. Okay. What's prophecy? They declared word. Yes. All right. That means even what they are declaring, they are declaring what they know. Yeah. And what they know must not be perfect. Some people declare things that their heart told them, which is appealing to, to them, them, and say, God said. Okay. All right, so let's leave God said out of the equation of choosing. Hmm. Because God gave you the capacity to choose, although as his child, he expects that we run things by him. Yeah. So like uh, Proverbs 3 says, in all your ways, acknowledge him, including this way. Mm -hmm. But please, can we leave God out of the equation? It leads to a lot of confusion. All right, leave God out of the equation of the discourse, not out of the equation of the choosing. Because okay. there are two things about God when it comes to choosing okay. or doing the relationship business. Two things. Number one, the revealed word. Okay. The one I don't need any special voice from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Do not be unequally yoked. Yeah. So that one is already there. Yeah. There's no need to ask any question. Yes. Then number two, this one is your child, mm -hmm. but do we have a future together. Mm -hmm. Help me to make yeah. that decision. Yeah. Then he can guide you. All right, but the decision is yours. So number one, people should stop flinging God said, God said on each other. Hmm. Two, what happens is whether you fling it or you don't fling it, marriage is made in heaven, fail on earth because my people are not destroyed because I am not for them. Okay. They are destroyed for lack of knowledge. knowledge. Marriages fail because of wisdom issue, not because God was not in the marriage. Hmm. Wisdom. You get what I mean? Hmm. So it's so important to come to the point where you realize that the failure is not necessarily the failure of whether God was involved. It's the failure of the lack of wisdom of the parties involved. Hmm. Because here is the deal. All of us created and walking the earth has emotions. And emotions are the way that they are triggered. Mm -hmm. So if you marry one who is not schooled in how to trigger the emotion, mm -hmm. keep the emotion, you are just going to have a boring marriage, go back to church, be spiritual, but be utterly useless to yourself. Mm -hmm. That's why we teach the kind of things we teach, mm -hmm. so that people can become smart. In fact, I'm tired of asking believers if, what they know about emotional intelligence, and they are blank. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. The fact that you're born again does not mean you, are, you can pick wig and gown and get in a courtroom and say, I know all things. I can do all things. You can't do no all things. Mm -hmm. They'll ask you for your certificate. Yeah. That means in the earth, you need to get certain kind of qualifications to do the things you can do or that you're qualified to do. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are qualified by age to choose a spouse, mm -hmm. but they are not qualified to run a marriage. Hmm. Once you get that, you now distinguish between God said or didn't say, whether God was in it or was in it, and the process of the union. Hmm. All right? So once you get that, you take the pressure off whether God said or God didn't or say. God didn't say. <laughs> okay, so let's move. Let's just move on from this because a lot of questions are popping up, but let's just move on from here. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> I want to divert attention a little to our uh, girls. You know, uh, I want to focus because, you know, we have a kind of cultural setting that uh, places a lot of restrictions hysterically on women. So, for instance, if there is a girl, a young girl, yeah. uh, ready for marriage, and there's this brother that uh, she likes, and uh, the brother is not forthcoming. <laughs> <laughs> It's not forthcoming. It's not forthcoming. <laughs> okay. How does a, a lady really communicate how she feels and uh, still maintain her respect? But first of all, let's even start with, is it even right? What's your take on it? Before I come to, is it even right? You used okay. one word that I'm going to jump on. Communicate how she feels. That's a problem. This is not a feeling business. Okay. Because you are going to have feeling for a billion persons, if possible. Okay. For example, I went to a program with someone, like she was on my team. Okay. She saw someone there. I mean, there was no contact. But somehow she began to follow him on social media. Okay. And she came to me, I was just laughing. Like, after his wedding, not too long from that time, <laughs> he got married. <laughs> so she's like, boss, uh -uh, this guy that I just started crushing on, I say he's, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your crush. Yeah. So let me jump on that word, feeling. Mm. She doesn't need to communicate the feeling. Okay. Because it's not a feeling business. Okay. Feelings we follow, but it's not about feeling. Okay. Let's go back to what we defined earlier. Is he choosing you and are you choosing him? Okay. That's, the, that's the question. So you don't even need him to be forthcoming. The okay. question you should ask yourself, all these vibes I'm feeling, 
is he choosing me? Okay. So I teach what I jokingly call GPS, Global Positioning System. <laughs> All right? <laughs> if you are certain in your heart yes. that there's a possibility of a future, yes. then you begin to ask yourself, what wise ways can I deploy, you know, my presence? Huh. To make him aware of what he's not being aware of. Oh, my God. All right? <laughs> so, <laughs> that brings you to a very critical point. Yes. Now, do you know some ladies are not accessible? Number okay. one, you make yourself accessible. Okay. Yes. Some ladies, somebody sends hi. In fact, a lot of ladies, eh, <laughs> we have culturally trained them not to know how to open the door for a man to continue conversation. Okay. Why should this? You know, a lot of ladies are judgmental. Mm. You see, you're here, man. <laughs> what is hi? <laughs> is he high or chop? He can't even drive a conversation. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes. Say hello. So some people leave it at that high. Let me see how you eat his high. He will eat his high now. <laughs> Let the door be open. It's yes. okay to even nudge the conversation a bit. Okay. Yes. You have not sold yourself. You have not gone cheap. Okay. Hi. Hello. If, I, if he's not asking how are you, ask him how are you doing? Okay. All right? You get what I mean? So it's important to be able to, you know, be accessible. That's just one example of many okay. in the global positioning system. Huh. You know, make yourself accessible. approachable, available. When I mean available, like, I'll give you another example. Somebody comes to me and is all about, no, 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 no. The, it doesn't even look like anything God told me. Huh. And he was inviting her for dinner. Huh. I'm like, that dinner is not in your room. It's not in his room. Mm -hmm. It's in a public place. So Thank you for all you know. Go and eat the free food first. Yes, in the midst that. of that free food and interaction, you can come to terms with whether that thing you used to know is exactly it or he meets, you weigh him. Mm. You weigh it based on conversation, interaction. That's what dating is. Yeah. Date. Keep dates. Hmm. All right? You have not entered his house. He has not entered your house. He doesn't even know the location of your house. Yes. I mean, you choose to drive there. He drives there. You meet there. You park there. It doesn't, you know. So it becomes important for the lady to ask herself, what are the avenues through which this person may be able to assess me? Because the scenario you gave, okay. there's already a loose relationship. It may be same fellowship, same church, same okay. this. You know, make yourself open to uh, the possibility of even interaction. Because it begins with interaction. The gentleman may be doing his PhD on you yeah. from a distance, long distance PhD. Uh. Make him come and do it on site. Like, you can move into campus and do it on campus by talking to me, chatting <laughs> with me. You don't have to do online. Uh -huh, you don't have to do online. You don't have to be going through my studies a thousand times without right. talking to me. All right, all uh -huh. right. <laughs> so let's just take a quick break. And so we'll take a very quick break. And when we come back, we'll continue this conversation. I'm very sure you don't want to go anywhere right now.
Hello, welcome back to the Youth Arena Show and we are still on to the discussion segment. We have been discussing love and relationship and it's been beautiful all the way. Okay, so you, you've said a lot about uh, this uh, GPS thing. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I think I'm going to come for further study on that <laughs> one. <laughs> but just as we proceed, uh, you, you've said a lot. But let me ask you, if your wife had asked you out, would you have, would you have married her? No. And if you married her, would you have respected her? Oh, no. No. Okay. Uh, when it comes to the issue of ladies asking or the lady approaching, okay. um, I'm careful to be guided by a few factors. Okay. Factor number one, scripture. Okay. There's no precedent in scripture that supports that. Okay. It's supposed to be the man. Okay. All right. That's why I talk about GPS. Okay. Number two cultural factors okay. in our culture and in most cultures in the world mm -hmm. now the western world lie a lot okay. we need to get that straight yeah. the reason why they have so many broken relationships is because the principles on which they practice the relationships are broken mm -hmm. see an average man anywhere in the world whether in america canada australia or africa mm -hmm. wants to chase okay. he sees relationship as a reward Okay. That means he placed so much value, he pursued something. Uh -huh. So even in my GPS model, man, you give him room to chase. Okay. Can you imagine, I mean, being all ready for a person who after you position to talk to you, you still don't give an instant answer. Uh -huh. Why? So that he can express and explore that capacity of a man, okay. you know, to come for you. Uh -huh. So in the Western world, it looks like the lady can propose. That's all rubbish. Uh -huh. But here's the deal. His first thought of processing it is you're desperate. Okay. The next thought is he's a champion. Huh. Stand up for the champion. <laughs> That's exactly what he's doing. Okay. So what he feels is, you know what? They're coming from. Let me be honest with you. People talk about objectifying women. Okay. And I keep arguing that women have done more to objectify women than men okay. have done. Yes. So he looks at it like, yeah, girls are desperate. Uh -huh. I can have who I want. Uh -huh. If a girls approach me now and chase me now, uh -huh. what are you doing? You are taking away the rock from under his feet uh -huh. where he should stand and love you properly, uh -huh. where he should take responsibility. Uh -huh. How long would you take responsibility for the things he should do in life? Uh -huh. So that's the wrong foundation. Uh -huh. So wh whether you travel from the Bible to culture to the disposition of an average man, it becomes a risky thing to do. Uh -huh. And don't forget, see, we're not blind. We know the difference between green and red and yellow light. Okay. All right? So you turn on the light. Huh. Then put him to work. Huh. And let me even add this. It creates the balance. Okay. When I tell people to do GPS, it is not because you should form that you delay when he comes. No. Okay. It is because I GPSed you based on how I felt. I thought I could make the decision for you. Mm -hmm. But how many, you know, you, you know that closeness or proximity takes the patent to what is hidden. Okay. So sometimes you actually wanted him. Mm -hmm. You thought you would love him. Mm -hmm. Then he comes closer. And, and because you have proximate what? advantage, you mm -hmm. just realize that this yeah. is not what I thought it was. Yeah. So it's not about show green light and the moment he moves, you're all on the ground. Yeah. That is still cheap. Mm. Yeah, come, see, the green light is come close enough Okay. To see if I can sustain the decision I already have. Okay. That's why you still slow yourself down. Okay. He asks you out, okay, I'll get back to you. Or let me think about it. Or let me pray about it. What are you doing? You're, you're now using proximity. He was yes. one mile away. Now it's half a mile. Yeah. You can see better. Yes, and well, you can assess things better. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's beautiful. Now let's go to really define relationships and know. So that people get to know where they are. You know, uh, we had a lot of... Uh, artists, ministers get married last year and uh, there were a lot of shattered hearts, girls got broken in. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> and oh that's because that's because a girl is just talking with a guy and in her mind she has married him, she has given birth to children she has done everything with this guy and the guy is just minding his business and serving the Lord <laughs> <laughs> so as funny as it is, it's, 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 a, it's a challenge and we must face it so what are the various forms of relationship and how should each one be treated? Before I go into the various forms, okay. many of those guys are not as innocent as you just painted. Okay. So no, some of them actively sustained the flow okay. for the lady. Okay. Creating an impression. There are different models of that. Okay. Model number one, 
make everybody feel I'm close to everybody. Yeah. While promising one marriage. Any MD that is single <laughs> and is not living a well defined yes. life, drawing life, you are a suspect. Yes. Because there are more ladies in most choirs. In choirs, yes. I mean, ladies are very soft, gentle, most of them. Yes. People. You know, and also trust in the Lord and for relationships. Bringing a cooler of food. Uh -huh. <laughs> bringing cooler. And MD is also a cool guy. And he's eating the food. Most MDs are trying. They look fine. Yes. You know, so you get what, what I'm saying. So very often the guys are yes. not as innocent. Okay. So they lead them on. But of course it takes foolishness to be led on by a person who should not be leading you. Yeah. All right. Mm. So when it comes to different forms of relationship, for perspective, people need to stop calling everybody friend. Some people mm. are just mere acquaintances. Mm. Something makes us meet. Okay. For instance, it's an acquaintance or she's an acquaintance who are only meeting church. Okay. Brother in the Lord, sister in the Lord. Yeah. If most of us have people in that category, we don't even know where they live. That's yeah. just an acquaintance. Yes. All right? Then the interested person is the one with whom you are beginning to make consideration. Okay. The person of interest. Okay. So I'm making consideration. I'm improving the connection beyond acquaintance. Okay. I'm trying to know better. I'm stopping by at their office. Okay. I'm putting an extra call. Okay. Oh, I didn't see you in church. Mm. Ah, what's wrong with you? Hope all is fine. Mm. I noticed of late your status is like this, like that. Are you sad? You are just, you know, using communication to try to yes. know more. You are, because what? There's interest. Yeah. Now, dating. Dating is the relationship where you begin to try to connect deeper than just being interested. Mm. Where the investigation begins. Okay. And, you know, if you look at criminal uh, investigations, Investigation commences, you know, proper when there's an invitation mm -hmm. so that you can interact, you can ask questions. Yeah. You know, the dating phase is a non-committed relationship. Yeah. It's a relationship with no commitment. Okay. So at that stage, you cannot say, I saw you greeting so, so and so person. Why were you greeting? You cannot break my heart at that phase. But people yes. don't know this thing. The moment you get little attention, you're already in love. You're not yes. in love with anything. You're dating. Yeah. It's non-commitment. Mm -hmm. But this non-commitment is a little higher. Mm. All right, because you meet up, you have conversations. Yeah. If you use it well, I mean, you can see a movie, you can blah blah, and all of those things. Now, when you begin to cross the dating phase, is where you have gathered sufficient evidence to commit. Huh. Courtship begins from the moment there's a commitment with view to marriage. Huh. That's when courtship begins. Yeah. Until there's the express commitment of will you marry me? And forget this generation. People already are cutting for three years. Then one day they will arrange camera, arrange their um, friends, wear um, the same course. clothes. Then you'll be doing camera. That one is for sure. Okay. The courtship did not begin then. It began if some people, some people do that public proposal one week to their wedding. Yes. Because they just want to have a record. <laughs> yes, that's you know, that's all rubbish. Okay. All right? So if you want to practice it, enjoy your video, enjoy your photo shoot, mm. that's, that's for the camera. Yeah. But it's the moment there's express. Mark the word. Express. express. There's no... You don't sink into courtship. You don't flow into courtship. You don't just appear in courtship. You agree. Okay. This is why people do relationship for so many years, do even the things they shouldn't do. They say, oh my God, you broke my mind. And the person is like, I never told you I'll marry you. Uh -huh. But they were in conduct doing courtship. Yeah. So courtship by conduct without express agreement uh -huh. is, 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 is a journey towards heartbreak. Uh -huh. Big rubbish. Uh -huh. All right. So it's so important to know that to cross the dating phase. And now here's the deal. Sometimes you are just in the dating phase and two people make mistakes on you. Number one, you making okay. mistake on yourself. Okay. The lady now feels suddenly obligated to go and cook soup. Are you a cook so. or laundry? Please. In fact, I advise people that is the time not to even visit. Why? Your emotions will play a trick on you. Yes. You start doing things you should never do. Yes. So in the dating phase, you must keep a comfortable distance. Yeah. But you know there's a connection. Mm. Then you, you translate from that with express commitment. Mm. I still remember how I asked my wife out for God's sake as an university student. I love you. I like to start a relationship with you that ends in marriage. Straight on the table. It's not go come. It's not uh, I, I, uh, like on to what. Mm. I like to start a relationship with you that ends in marriage. Then she asked me a few questions about my plan, what my thoughts were, what my ambitions are, blah, blah, blah. We're already friends. So she was asking this question like she didn't know. Mm. So that's what dating should be. Mm. Interview. Mm. 
Yeah. If, I, if you are not interviewing the person, why employ the person in marriage or into courtship? <laughs> so from that point, you now agree, yes, we are now doing a relationship with marriage in view. Then the conversation changes. It's no longer just a few things you are getting to know. You are now getting to know core things like cultural convictions, spiritual convictions, association. You now go deeper. That's when courtship begins. That's the only time you can talk about he broke your heart or he left you or she left you. Before that time, you were not even together. Mm -hmm. That's when your first proper we are now in something mm -hmm. begins. Yeah. Then, of course, the, the oath of marriage takes you into the final phase of the relationship. But mm -hmm. from dating down to acquaintance, to interest, yeah. to friendship, nobody broke your heart. Yeah. It's just your emotions playing tricks. And it should be responsible for that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you so much. Now, uh, having, having overcome all the hurdles of trying to find someone to <laughs> finally settle down with, how do you begin to build companionship how do you begin to bond bonding 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 flows from communication communication sinks into friendship and friendship produces the bond okay i'm going to say this with every sense of responsibility unfortunately we live in a generation that is struggling to even understand what bonding or courtship is mm. so before you know it we are struggling not to kiss not to have sex Mm. Not to be intimate. Mm. And that closes all I'm about to talk about. Yeah. People need to learn to have conversations. Mm. Like in Abuja where I live, I give the example. If you truly want to have a proper relationship, eh, go to Millennium Park at 9 a.m. Mm. Keep your phones in the car. And decide between two of you. You will be in Millennium Park. You know I'm using a park. Yeah. You can't have okay. sex in a park. Yes. You can't do some kind of things. You can yes. only connect. Mm. All right? So keep your phones in the car and propose in your heart to be there together till 5 p.m. Hmm. You will see this generation. You now see it's hard work. 30 minutes later, they have nothing to say to each other. Yes. They are missing their WhatsApp, their Instagram, their Facebook. Yes. Because that's who they are really in relationship with. Yes. Oh, they are wondering which trend is passing by that they are not commenting on. Hmm. So they don't even have time. So hmm. the place to begin is to put yourself in position to truly bond. Mm -hmm. Have conversation. Pick up common interests and have conversation. Because mm -hmm. we have people married today. Nothing joins them. The, yes. guy, the guy likes football. But the lady thinks that Messi is the coach of Man U. And that Ronaldo mm -hmm. uh, is, <laughs> is a Nigerian player. Yes. That's what she thinks. Place or, exactly. <laughs> or the lady, the lady is interested in what the guy knows nothing about. Yes. And one of the places where people bond also is when they do projects together. You know, that's why... Workplace romance happens because people are brainstorming together. Yes. And in the place of brainstorming is where you actually find beauty and handsomeness very easy. Mm -hmm. You're just like, wow, anytime he makes contribution, my heart just melts. Mm -hmm. Wait, let it not melt. Calm down. <laughs> so you need to pick up stuff that helps you bond. Okay. Is there a project you are doing or he's doing? Get involved. I mean, bring your advice to the table. Bring your suggestions to the table. Be able to have conversation that brings your best, your respective best to the table. Mm -hmm. So time, conversations, communication, you know, make out enough time to meet up all of this. And some people say, the nature of my job, the nature of my job. Let me tell you something. You make time for everything that is important to you. Yeah. There's no job that I know of that doesn't have leave, even those who have not taken leave for 10 years. Yeah. But when something important is on the table, I'll give you an example. If they are rushing someone to ICU, there's nothing like I don't take leave. Yes. You will go to ICU. <laughs> you know, so it's yes. so important to ask yourself what, what matters to us. How can we make time to address this relationship in the mm. proper sense of it? Mm. All right. So once they begin to do that, you realize that the focus is changing. Of course, the emotion will always try to raise head because you're in love, you're together and all mm. of that. But the more you stay focused, I didn't even talk about some. Take some courses together. Okay. There are marriage courses or premarital courses everywhere. Read some books together. Put yourself in place where value is being exchanged. Mm. Plan your trips when it has to come to, uh, come to like seeing family or mm. interaction with family and warming the floor to now formally tell them. Yeah. Build up all of those things together. Mm. I do not believe any couple to be should spend an entire year without reading at least six books. Okay. One for every two months and okay. discuss it. So you hear silly things like, he doesn't like to read, she doesn't have time, she doesn't this. That means you don't have time to be married to me. Yeah. Because we're headed nowhere. So yes. it's an active process of making life happen. Mm. Faith without work itself is dead. It's dead. Relationship without work, dead. Yeah. Now, uh, because youths are, are vibrant and uh, there's so much energy, there's so much life, 
uh, there's tendency for emotions to just pour up, you know, and uh, if, not, if not properly managed, we run into problems. How do you harness the potential of their energy to be useful to themselves, to be useful to community, to be useful to the world in general? How do they manage their emotions? I've always been amazed at this question every time it comes out. Okay. I'm a youth now. Okay. All right? Now, I met the Lord in 1997. I was just how old. Then I spent very active time from secondary school just serving Jesus. Mm -hmm. Being a student and serving Jesus, translated to university, out of university, and blah. Let me say this. Anything you don't deploy becomes a destruction point for you. Mm -hmm. Youths have energy. But the moment you get in purpose... Even your energy is not enough. Yeah. Because you realize that your hands are full. Yes. Now, somebody has energy. He's not even active in his church. Yeah. You don't have energy. You are wasting. Satan will use you. You know, it's just like that woman who came and poured her oil on Jesus and Judas was like, ah, if you are told this, Jesus said, calm down. Please, pour you always have with you. Hmm. She poured her worth yes. on Jesus. So, Mr. Youth, Auntie Youth, hmm. where exactly are you pouring this energy? Energy. What are you pouring it on? Mm. Because I've met some believers also who can't but club every Friday. Like yes. they want somewhere to exp express what? Mm. I can't gyrate in church. Mm. I can't gyrate within safe zones of my faith. Yeah. There's a lot of purpose out there. Yes. If you have energy, man, there are enough IDP camps in Nigeria yeah. to keep you busy for the year. Mm -hmm. Like if you have the extra time. Yes. You got your job to do. You got your purpose to discover. You got even the relationship to put value in. Hmm. Like I said, somebody has energy. In a year, he has not read two books. Yeah. Somebody has energy. He's not taking extra courses. What kind of energy? And unfortunately, yeah. our energy in this generation is channeled more into the screen of a phone. Yes. Commenting, liking, liking posting. looking for like. Yes. You know, in fact, have you seen all the mad challenges that is on social media right now? Yeah. That is what people call energy. energy. That's not energy. That's destruction. Yes. So it becomes so important to channel your energy mm. into productivity mm. so that by the time you are hitting certain age, you look back and see what you did with your strength. Yeah. So if you are not using your strength, your strength is damaging you. Yeah, that's all right. So right. Now, talking about using your strength, people who have found purpose, people who have found direction in life, uh, don't want to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's another balance to strike. Okay, so they don't want to be vulnerable. They want to focus. They, they want to do what they are doing. And they feel like love makes me vulnerable. So no, like no, no. And then so we now have issues of ladies, men uh, getting married so late, you know, because they, 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 don't, they don't feel they have enough time to uh, accommodate a relationship and grow the process and all of that. How do we strike the balance? Striking the balance is first of all an issue of wisdom. Okay. I remember getting into my wife's life in university. By the way, we were opposed by a lot of people who thought the relationship would not see the gates of school. Okay. Well, we have gone past the gates of school. Uh, I remember even within our fellowship, it was like a rule for people who are central high school. Mm -hmm. But plus the relationship, I don't know why they kept inviting me for interview every year for mm -hmm. central high school ship. Mm -hmm. And I think part of where I used to damage it and just remain my subgroup as leader was every time I got in for an interview, First question, are you in a relationship? Yeah. And my answer was straightforward. Yeah. Yes, with Julia Ibrahim. <laughs> that was her maiden name. Okay. Straight up, so that you put, just apply that your condition and know that we can't, not we, we are not part of you people yeah. in that level. You yes. should keep doing your school. Yes. I'm serving my Jesus. Now, to the question you asked, um, Julia's results turned out better from the moment we started a relationship okay. in that school. Okay. People said all oh, manner of things, blah, blah, blah. I, I, always, I always was enjoying my school anyway, Oops, somehow. So, but she needed some improvement, and it just, whew. and I'm like, yes, why wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, you got, you got the right relationship with someone you can talk to. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I, every time I say this, I just laugh. I don't even know how we did it. But, I mean, we, we would do research together. She was studying a different bu uh, course, business, I was in law. Wow. But we research, like especially when she was writing a uh, project, like we we'll do research together. Wow. I mean, uh, she I'm supposed to be learned, yeah. you know, and all of those kind of stuff. So when you find how to create the balance, all of that becomes rubbish talk. Okay. It's about the balance. For example, people are going to be married and still work. Mm. 
Yeah. Is it that they, when they get home, they are married? Then when they go to work, they are, they are workers and not married? Yeah. No. Life is about balance. Mm, wow. So as you are sitting here, there are different sides to you. Yeah. How do you find the balance of the different sides to you? Yeah. This is my simple answer to everybody who asks. Be all things at the same time. Okay. I'll give you an example. Sitting here, husband. Sitting here, father. Sitting here, lawyer. Sitting here, boss. Sitting yeah. here, mentee. Sitting here, mentor. Mm. Depending on who I meet yeah. per time. So I need to be me at all times. Not having different faces. Yeah. So whether I'm sitting on my seat as a lawyer or not, if you ask me this question, I'll still give you an anointed answer. Yeah, so I don't right. segment my life. Yes. I keep my life together where yeah. it belongs. Yeah. And it belongs in me. Yeah. So it just makes it that easy. And you begin to find the balance to what's important. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Yeah, yeah. So what's expedient to do per time is so now the question done. you ask. Mm. So not because I have a babe, I will not go to class to read. Mm. Not because I have fellowship, I will not attend classes. Yeah. So you find the balance. The same way we're doing fellowship and school is the same way you do love. I'm yeah. talking about vulnerability. If you love right, being vulnerable is sweet. For instance, I give a very, I mean, this example sounds mundane, but it's real. After such pressured days of work, ministry, one of the best things that happens is to just get home and get a massage. I'm mm. telling you. Yeah. Without trying to go to a massage parlor. Yeah. Man, just put your leg, auntie. Thank yeah. you. That thing you did yesterday, I don't mind you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How do you know you're right for marriage? And then when you get into marriage, how do you manage yourself? Hiccups and all of that. How do you manage yourself? And how do you intentionally stay in love? Okay. The same principle runs through all the questions you ask. Okay. Number one, how do you know you're right for marriage? Because you are right for marriage. <laughs> 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 All right, of course, maturity, yeah. that you, wait, age first, that you're yes. old enough. Because even if you feel like you are right for marriage at nine, you're not. Yes. All right, age wise. Uh, while age is not maturity, first of all, let's even humanly speaking, yeah. be at the age that the law permits you. Yeah. Number two, the maturity. And what goes into the maturity? The capacity to choose what you are ready to stick with. Hmm. That's it. Yeah. Number three, of course, what is God saying? Mm. Because for some people, based on God's all-knowing capacity, he knows that, hey, calm down. Please, yeah. not now. Yeah. Mm, I'm still doing X, Y, Z. Yeah. That's his prerogative. And yes. that's for you to know from him. Then when you get in, the same principle of being deliberate flows with it. Yeah. You know, see, if you want to, I've seen marriages break mm -hmm. like six months, 11 months. Mm. Or man, if one guy was married for four days. Wow. Yeah. No time to go into this. Four days. They have, it's scattered, hmm. you know. So um, it's a whole lot of stuff. Hmm. How do you go in being deliberate? How do you stay in being deliberate? I'm going to give you an example to just close this. Do you sit in your room with the air condition installed, with light available, and you'll be shouting, this room is hot, this room is hot, this room is hot. No, you pick the remote and you put it on. Yeah. What did you just do? You took an action that would change the atmosphere. Yeah. So to stay married, you need to have that remote in your hand and not to just be shouting, hey, and like I wrote recently, give some people bitter leaf, they make a good soup. Give others, they'll taste it and say, it's bitter, it's bitter, it's bitter. No, we're mm. not there to observe, we're there wisdom. to condition. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So it's been doses upon doses of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. And uh, I have to watch this episode again and again. Thank God. Thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. God bless you. Amen. Yes. God is love. His essence is true love. And it's from the fabric of love that he crafted us. We are agents of love, agents of God. And so all we truly are is to live for him, to live for love, to give out and receive pristine love is our utmost calling. And so if you're listening to us right now and you haven't accepted the love of God in your heart, which he made available through his dear son, you need to do that right away. You are in dear need of true love. You might not even know it. That emptiness, that void in your spirit, in your heart, you can't explain. It all starts from accepting Jesus and every other thing, every other relationship will fall in place. All you have to do is to quickly say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you love me and you gave yourself for me. I'm grateful for Calvary. I accept you in my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. 
Amen. If you just pray that prayer, you are welcome to the family of love. I encourage you to grow in the love of God by reading your Bible and praying every day. Thank you so much for coming to be a blessing to thank us. Thank God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank God, my pleasure. Yeah. So see you same time, same station next week. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Bye-bye.